Welcome to Bamford Rose and another question of the week. In this week's question of the week, it's what didn't make it to the final cut of the Ian Callum interview. This refers to our Ian Callum interview, which is over on our sister channel, Petrol Revolt. We save as an exclusive for our Bamford Rose viewers some walkarounds done by Ian, where he just gives some off-the-cuff comments about car design over the years that he was at Aston. If you haven't done so already, then head across to our sister channel, Petrol Revolt, and check out the full interview with Ian Callum. After you've done that, then head across to the Petrol Revolt website. Subscribe by filling out your details to get your Petrol Revolt black rear registration plate sticker. So sit back and enjoy watching and listening to the random ramblings of a car designer. I had to live with the door, this was new. And I looked at highlights and they were all wrong. And then I noticed that we got this section here wrong relative to this one. And I was absolutely livid with myself. And it was, it was gone. I would scanned it. It was getting surfaced. It was finished. And every time I see a V12 now, I, I kick myself when I look at this. The highlights here are dreadful. The boxing glove mirrors, as I call them. Um, we changed that in the Callum version. We did a much sportier mirror on it, which is much nicer. But these came off of X, the same, came off the Jaguar XK. But the first Astons had Citroen mirrors on them. The six cylinder car had the ones that came off the door and there was Citroen CX mirror. That's much nicer, They're more like Porsche mirrors. You know. The DLO. This, this has just drove me mad because this part here is actually off XK. It's just an extrusion as this is. And I said, well, we've got to join it together. And Bob said, no, there's no money. That's it. Oh, horrible. <laughs> then the big filler cap had to look like something out of Halfords. <laughs> That's yeah. One of the most yeah. This is the, this is where we, we we in the clay model. Remember, this is in the clay. This would all be intersections. So this has just come straight, and this would be an intersection with no radius in here. And it took the line and went like that. I said, right, hold it. That's it. And that line stayed. That was it. Uh, when we came to do the um, uh, the production car, we had to pull this body side out. 25 millimeters. If you look at the original one, it's much slimmer here. This is much further in. I think the glass plane's in the same place, but this is, it hasn't got as much shape to it. But one of the nice features, I didn't mention it, one of the nice features is this, this um, trim. I want to do something different with the trim, so we, we, we made this chrome part on the outside. Of course, it runs down and runs around the back of the window. It's actually quite a nice detail. It's different. Rather than putting the trim around the glass, we swooped it down across the back. Something um, we probably didn't mention, we, we got into all issues. We didn't want to put a nose in the car like the other cars have. And um, I, think it was, um, I think it was Betts actually said, we want this without the nose. So we tried to find a way this would meet the American five mile an hour impact. And the way we got around it was, we. We put a, 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 the, the plinth of the, the number plate on the American cars were quite thick. And that was the impact point. So it wasn't here. That's why we didn't have to put a soft nose on it. Got away with it. But then they don't fit very well, do they? But it's just a very simple line, this. This is all very delicate compared with some of the other cars. And in principle, it's very similar to the, to the Vanquish. The way this just sweeps up and there's the offset and runs around. Um, I just, again, I love the rear haunch in this car, the way it just pops out of the body surface. It's not as pronounced as that one, but if you look at the, the way the body surface goes all the way down, it's fairly constant, and then it just rolls out in a very controlled manner over the rear wheel. I really like that. The, the downside of this, when you get the convertible version of this, because it hasn't, it's all about length. 
And when you get to the convertible version, it starts to look a bit long. Um, you know, it doesn't have that kind of tightness that it might have had. It's interesting going from a coupe to a convertible or a convertible to a coupe. It's always better to go from a convertible to a coupe because that way a coupe is easier to do. The convertible is much more difficult. And if you get the convertible right, you'll get the coupe right. But it doesn't necessarily work the other way. And both engineering wise as well, structurally. So when we did the F-Type, uh, we did the convertible first. So it's, uh, it's quite a, but yeah, I like this car. It's got an elegance to it. It's, very, it's a very happy car. <laughs> you know, and I look at these shapes, they're very simplistic. There's nothing overt about them. If we were to do it now, that things would be much more exaggerated. If you look at the, the form language of cars now, they're much more aggressive. There's lots of things going on, some of them too much. Whereas these, just very simple forms that all relate to each other. The other thing was to try and, when you do a power bolt in an Aston, to try and, to try and get a bit of shadow here. So it, it, it almost emulates, remember the DB4s and 5s that had the vent at the front? And in order to try and emulate that, you get a little bit of shadow. So in some light, it gets dark across here, especially on the Vanquish. And it kind of emulates a little bit of that nostril that you used to see in the old DBs. That was deliberate. It could flow all the way straight through, but it doesn't. It goes down and goes, goes round. And, and, the, and the other important thing is, is where it starts. If it starts further down, it's a Jaguar. If it starts further back, it's an Aston. Point of differentiation. So when we did the XK, we made sure it came all the way to the front. And the Aston was further back. <laughs> and of course the XK picked up that typical parallel line that Jaguars had, you know, like the XJ had. Whereas this was much more of a, an integrated bonnet ball. You know, so the one area that did change in the, on the, um, the nine was that originally I had two roundels in here and they just cut in to the, the bumper. It was still a lamp, this shape, but it just had graphics of roundels. And, uh, and Fisker decided that um, they looked like a Honda, so he decided to create this design, which is fine. I've got no problem with that. I think it works quite well. But the part I like is just the way it sweeps off here and rolls back in. It's important that it either stops at the door and breaks on the door deliberately, as some cars do, or it runs through. You know, you, you, if it runs through, it's got to go through by a certain amount, so it's got some value. And of course, the body engineering guys don't like that because it's quite difficult to make. Um, they'd rather just stop it at the door and the door can stop, so it just breaks and it doesn't look right. Yeah, that's got a proper trim in it as well. It's finished off nicely. <laughs> Unlike that car. Click us a like, subscribe to our channel and we'll see you on the next question of the week.